Hey everyone, it's Nicholas Wilton, and I'm super excited to be sitting here today with Rachel Davis. Um, Rachel is an artist, a mixed media artist. Uh, she actually is in the studio uh, that I'm in, in the building, just so happens. And, uh, but she's also a psychologist and has been uh, working with artists uh, for decades. And so she, we're always, Rachel and I are always having these conversations around getting stuck and unstuck and the barriers that uh, artists face. And she's particularly suited to speak to this because not only is she an artist, but she also understands kind of the backstory and working with artists and the experience. So our hope today is that we can shed some light on, on some of your challenges and, uh, and ways to move through it. So um, thanks so much for being here, Rachel. It's uh, great. I know we've talked a lot about this just in the halls. And mm -hmm. um, so it's nice to kind of memorialize it and, and get it down. Yeah. You know, because yeah, it right. really uncovers uh -huh. whatever crap you've got uh -huh. is going to get uncovered if you get serious about being an artist. You know, so, right. Right. so I feel like I've been very good with artists all along. And now I feel like I'm better because of my deep dive. And you're taking your own medicine. Exactly. I see. Yeah. So I definitely feel like you know, you get you get better at anything you do over yeah, over yeah, years. Yeah, but I'm yeah. I'm better now. You know, the last couple of years I was good before, but I I really get it. <laughs> right, yeah, right. I really get it now. Yeah, and so the um, the artist that you're working with, you're still working with, still working with. Is yeah. it? Um, and maybe this just sort of ties into the big challenges, artists. I mean, what are what are the where are they getting stuck? What, what are you um, seeing? The the big challenges. Are um, they're all fear-based, um, and I want to talk a little bit about that because well, I'll, I'll talk a lot about it because that's that's it, and I'm gonna lower that's the, it, isn't it? It is. It's fear. It is. It's fear, and I'm gonna <laughs> lower the bar on getting over it. You know? Oh, yeah. For I, all of us. For all of us. You mean you'll make it easier to jump over the bar and no, get rid of fear? No, I feel like we're gonna we're not gonna try to get over it. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. That's what we're gonna do. Because that's a lot. I don't know. We yeah, got thirty five minutes here. We're we not gonna do everybody. it. We're not no, curing people. No, we're today. not curing anybody and we're gonna like give up trying to cure people, which is hard because everybody wants to be cured of how crappy it feels to feel frightened. Yeah, that's what I everybody would. wants that. Yeah. Um so but we're gonna talk about ways to not keep trying to do that because yeah. it's um, we're draining. reframing the problem. We're reframing the problem. Um, mm -hmm. We're reframing the problem. And we're going to reframe the problem with, it's interesting, as, again, as I was preparing, with values, but not like dark light values. We're going to reframe the problem with like what matters to you values. Some yes. people don't like that word because they feel like it's too moralistic. Uh -huh. But it's kind of where you start in CBP by asking what matters to you and right. why. And, and value, and uh, you know, because I... I, under, I get the metaphor of dark light value, but the loud conversation, the, 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 the bones of a picture, what you see, the right. primary pieces, it's about value. Right. And, and the values that we hold inside of ourselves are also the fundamental building blocks, Correct. the fundamental like star course, all that. Correct. So there is a, it's, it's a nice little... And I didn't realize that as yeah. I just as I was sort of thinking like what is it that helps you proceed even though fear is never going away? It's just not. It's not. It's not. Nope. That's the bad news. Okay. It's just not. <laughs> but how do you proceed anyway? And that's values. You know, that's one of the keys to proceeding yeah. anyway, is is that. Okay. Um so first I want to talk a little bit about fear and yeah. why it's not ever going anywhere. Okay. Um, and it really has to do with our, um, you know, it's evolutionary. Um, because if you think about it, our, you know, our far back ancestors who saw a tiger and said, whoa, that's a cool looking thing. And it's got stripes and look how fast it runs. And it's, you know, it's got teeth. And wow, that's cool. <laughs> they didn't make it. Like they didn't pass their genes on. Right, right. So the ones oh, who... Oh, I see. They were yeah, eaten. They were yeah, eaten. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. The ones who made it are the ones who were, you know, new to be terrified. Ah, interesting. You know, so it's very baked into our survival to be frightened, you know. And one of the big fears that comes up for, maybe for everybody, but for artists in particular, is, you know, I'm not good enough. You know, I won't, 
you know, I'm a fraud. I, you know, I suck. I won't be allowed. I can't call myself an artist. Who do I think I am? You know, they're imposter gonna, syndrome. Yeah, they're going to throw me out of the. They're going to throw me out of the tribe when they see my work. They're going to say I can't be here. If you think again, if you think evolutionarily, if you got thrown out of your tribe, you would be eaten by a tiger. You know, it's like you if you don't right. have your group around you. Well, for sure, the feeling of being on the outside. Um, I just, I was just did this thing at this, this, I, uh, it's, a, it's a trail race. It's a big race, a uh, big, huge event. And I went and, and I volunteered to help on mm-hmm. this trail. This mm-hmm. was just last weekend. Okay. And, um, and there's this big evening, you know, you work on this trail and you're just like cutting weeds all day. It's kind of ridiculous, but mm-hmm. you know, I've put, I've run this race and I wanted to give back. It's the Western States race. Okay. It's a big deal up in Tahoe. And and there's this party in the, in the night, and there's all like the people who go every year. There's a lot, a lot of veterans. There's a huge mm-hmm. history with this thing. Right. And they are all drinking and telling stories. But it's all about this race. And as a person who's on the outside, right. you don't, you're just new there. Right. And this guy was telling all these stories, and he was kind of drunk and everything. He goes, you know what? I want to see who are the, who are the greeny, who are the green people, who are, like, who are the newbies, you know? Mm-hmm. And he made us stand up. And oh, wow. it was incredibly awkward, and um, mm. it w- it was uh, alienating. And I mean, I was like, well, this yeah. guy clearly doesn't know how to build community because right. it's like right. you don't want to isolate people, you don't want to make a us and them. Right. I was shocked at how um, how bummed out. It really bummed me out. Correct. Like it really right. was right. like right. I just and you know I'm like I don't care. Right. I mean, I, like you, I'm, you I, have I have a community. You know. Right. Right. But I was just really. I was, I didn't sleep well. I left early. I did, you wow. know, this is just a guy who was drunk and he wasn't using his words sure. closely, but yeah. being put on the outside. So right. I, I relate to that yeah. totally. And, and think, it's very primal. You know, I think it's just baked in. And um, that's, that's a very primary reason it's not going anywhere. I mean, it's sort of baked into our, mm. everybody's DNA yeah. to need to, the, need to belong. And also as humans, we are dependent for so long like, you know, again, if our parents decide, yeah, I don't, I don't want this kid, <laughs> it's like, it's right. you're not going to make it for many, many, many years. Yeah, yeah, right. So, right, right. you're just, so you really, mm. really need the powers that be to find favor with you. And if they don't, you're screwed. Yeah. Um, and that goes on for a very long time. Yeah. Um, so there are many, many reasons that reinforce each other. For us to be on guard for belonging, you know, again, all this stuff gets in the way of doing good art. Like if you've got people thinking, you know, like, oh my God, what if people don't like it? You know, all this stuff. Totally, yeah. So, but it's just, it's just in there and it's, it's not going anywhere. Um, So what happens when you're terrified, um, and this happens whether or not you're terrified because like if a tiger were to break into this room somehow right now, we'd both get these huge adrenaline shots. Mm-hmm. And what would happen is that um, the the um, the blood would like flee our brains and go to our extremities because we not only is deliberating not helpful it could hurt us if we stop to think like is this dangerous you know it's too late we're dead yeah right, um, right so right. it and the it, the blood comes you know it mobilizes you like the grandmothers who can pick up a car when that happens <laughs> yeah. it's because of adrenaline uh-huh. super helpful right, right. again keeps you alive but when you're afraid like that night i would imagine you had some little mini adrenaline thing going that night when when that guy said that you yeah. said it was something a little bit really uncomfortable uh-huh. and if you paid attention to what your body was doing I, yeah. it might have been was it tingly i mean do you well, know well it, it was it was like At first, I was like, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing because I don't have any story. I don't have any experience in here. And he was asking me, like, well, what was your day like? And it was just a boring day. I didn't have anything. But then I got like, look, jerk, you know, bring it. Like, I know how to talk in front of people. I'm fine in front of the 20 campfire of 20 people. He's trying to humiliate me Uh to make himself look better. Got it. I'll go for this. So I did get like I got in a a, a a stronger place. But it was I was. I, I was struck with how much it kind of like it how quick brought me to, down a little yeah, bit and how quickly my, yeah right yeah how quick because I was a, I was separated right. and I didn't even really care if I was in that group exactly you know exactly but I was like I need to go back and like paint and do okay. my thing and right. stay in my thing you know but that that was just a, he, they failed to uh, 
bring in volunteers and make them feel part of this thing. Right. It was a huge failure. Yes. But this guy's just a trail worker. He doesn't understand about how you make people, you know, like it's community building. Right. You know, it's like what we're doing. That's what I do. They'll, I, I've started saying this now. Um, people will come back and they'll say, well, I didn't do it because, or I started doing it, but I was, I was really bad. Because I so was people, here. People fill it in. People, I, fill, I do it with them in the, yeah, in the session. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I write stuff and they write stuff and they take their copy and I keep, their co- I, I keep a copy. Yeah. I will invite them to see it as an open document because if they're actually using it, they're going to notice more. So because I now notice that fourth square of how it should look, why does that make it possible for me to actually do that? Oh, because you're going to, again, you most people just... Again, they don't like the uncomfortable feelings, so they'll do a lot of stuff to avoid them, so they're not paying attention. Right. If you're stopping and paying attention, uh-huh. you have much more of a chance of making a choice. Uh-huh. So what happens is yes. you have a million choices every day. Yeah. And if you're paying attention, if you're actually paying attention, uh-huh. and like, like you're, you know like every second night, I'm pulling this out of my phone. I set, I set a, a, um, a reminder on my phone, and I'm, I'm checking this out. Yeah. So first of all, the fact that you know you're checking in with yourself makes you more like I I, I want to be good at stuff. So so I want I'm gonna I want to yeah. have good stuff to report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. whether or not you do, there's no I mean there's no way for somebody to fail at this exercise except for not to do it. Anything they notice is great. Like if you come back if you if I see you in the hall and I say Nick how's your grid doing you say whoa, Rachel, I've been doing it. I'm noticing I'm not making any changes. I said, I'll say, great noticing, Nick. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, like, right, right. But you're going to want to, yeah. when people, what tends to happen is when people are paying attention, it's not that they'll always choose like, oh, if I do this, I'll be further away from my goals. But that is the question you're asking. You're always question, the question you're asking is, okay, this happened. Did that bring me closer to that connection, right, that connection right, or did right. it take me further away? It's just being aware of your North Star. It's just being away. aware of your North Star. Or whatever the thing And being aware being... of the stuff that pulls you away from your North yeah, Star. Yeah, right. And being compassionate. With... Compassion is really important. And again, people don't have compassion for themselves. It's just really hard. So I have a, I have, there's a wonderful site by a local person. Her name is Kristen Neff, and she has a selfcompassion.org. But it's really good because people Mm -hmm. really struggle with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, So I I have resources that I can give for PDF. Yeah, great. We'll share that. Um, But... So people can fill this in on their own. Totally. Or I can... start to... Yes. You know, we'll have this in the PDF. And this is the the set of questions. And I I I encourage people to pay close attention. Yeah. Close, regular attention. Yeah. And... So you're actually not... You're not fixing anything here. It's just an awareness. It's an awareness practice. And the awareness opens up the possibility for making different choices in the direction of where you want to go. Fantastic. So the question is, how do you get here, right. living the life you want to live, even though this is not going to go away? Yeah. You know, yeah. and you get it by, you know, by paying close attention, by trying to forgive yourself, by accepting, by, by crying uncle, yeah. by, you know, it's not, it's not magic, it doesn't happen right away. You also, one of the things you can do, this is an ex- like a sort of a sub-exercise, is you can, all these other things that you do, you might take all of them and say, how do they work in the short term? You know, how do they work? And they probably work really well in the short term. Mm-hmm. And it's helpful for people to see that, because people end up kicking themselves, I can't believe I'm doing this. I mean, you're doing it for a reason, because you don't want to feel shitty. Right, right. That's why you're right, doing it. Right. Um, so if you keep doing that, you know, that, that allows some compassion for yourself. Okay, fine. I'm not an idiot. I'm not a loser. I'm, I'm a human struggling. It's hard. It's right. just hard. So, okay, if I can sort of like stop, give myself a hug, and then a nudge. You know, you're doing both. You want like acceptance, empathy, and a nudge. Yes. Okay. Because okay. you're not going to get here with just the acceptance and empathy. Right. Okay. Okay. 